All right, friends, so I was getting a bit tired of views. We've already covered the big ones, and so I want to pivot and look at automations for a little bit. There's so much that you can do in Odoo, so much that you can use based on different triggers to make your life easier to automate different processes. So let's go ahead and jump in. Okay, so we're back in the demo database, and we're going to go ahead and hop into tasks inside of our projects as there's something that we can do that can be pretty useful here. So we're gonna to go to projects and we're gonna go back to office design. And now we're going to go ahead and go into studio. So now we're in studio and you've probably looked up here or at least maybe noticed that there are different buttons up here that we can push in our menu. We're gonna go into automations today. And currently we see there are no automated actions. So we're gonna go ahead and create a new one. So let's go over the basic structure here. So we want to put a name here so that it kind of explains to us what we're hoping to do with that so that when we see it next time, it's a little bit more plain. So we're going to say change status based on attachment. Okay, because what we're going to do here is we're going to make it so that the status moves forward to completed once we have a file, a specific file attached to a task. Okay, we want to say, obviously, that the model is task, we came in through that. And so it defaults to that. But we can certainly say, Oh, I want this tied to a project, I want it tied to an account, a contact, something else. Okay. And that's to say, if we have that, we can then use the information that's in that record and make changes to that record based on this. Okay, we can turn off whether this is active or not at any point. So currently, it's inactive, if you turn it on, it's active. Certainly we may want to keep things that we are not using currently just to keep the code, or maybe we want to turn them on at some other point. Okay. For the trigger, we can go on creation, which is to say once a task is created, it's going to try and run this. Okay. On update is whenever we've updated something and saved the information, it's going to try and run. We would be best served to go in and say, I only want it when a security tokens updated, or maybe when the name's updated. Okay, so that way we're being specific. Otherwise, this can end up causing issues with performance in our system and we want to make sure to avoid that. Okay, and then we can do on creation and update, which is a combination of both. So it can happen when we're creating something or when we update it. On deletion, obviously the same sort of thing. When we're deleting a record, we want something else to happen. Based on form modification, okay, so it's giving us a warning real quick that we can only run Python code for this. So this is basically saying before we save anything, if we've changed anything inside of our form, it's going to go ahead and run this code. If you want an immediate action, this is the way to do it. And then based on time condition can also be very, very useful. So we can look at any date that's set on this record. And then based on that date, we can say, okay, number of hours, number of days before or after we want to run this action. Okay. Some other things to know when we look at on creation and update, there are a couple other things that pop up here. Okay. So say we've got a trigger field. We're going to go ahead and set that as status for now. We'll come back and, and change this up a little bit, but we want to make sure. So before update domain, this is saying before the change, what did the record look like? So currently, and this is really nice, we can click in and say, okay, there are 88 records that if they were changed, we would run this action on it, okay? Beyond this, we wanna say, okay, what should it be changed to, right? Where, where do we apply this? And this apply on is active in the rest of this, you know, for the rest of these options, we wanna be able to say, okay, looking at these 88 records real quick, we'll click into it and, Honestly, I only want this to apply for stuff that I'm doing. I'm Mitchell admin in this situation. So let's go ahead and apply this to just Mitchell admin. We're going to go to edit domain and we're going to go ahead and say assignees and we're going to say equal. I'm going to do contains just because that makes it a little bit easier for me to be a little bit looser with this. And we're going to confirm that. So you see we dropped down from 88 records to 43 records that this could potentially apply to. So if we go in here looking at this, I'm one of the assignees. 
for this. I'm going to sign in here for the rest of these. Okay. And that contains allows us to say, okay, it's not just me. It can include other people too. So a great way to kind of adjust for that and keep it a little bit more open. So now we understand fairly well the apply on and being able to edit this domain so it applies to certain records. But what can we do with this? Okay. By default, our action to do is to update the record. So what we can say is change this field. So let's say status in our instance. We're going to change that value to something else in here. Okay. So usually for this instance, you're going to want to set it up in this instance. You're going to want to set it up to where you're using IDs and we'll get into that a little bit more. I don't generally like going about it this way. I like to use Python code, but this is a way that we can update different values inside of the record if we want to. Okay. My favorite, well, let's delete this first. My favorite one to go with is execute Python code. Now you can do a lot with this. You can do a ton of different things with this and we'll get a little bit more into Python basics down the road, but it, it's very open-ended. You can just do a great deal with it. Um, we can always create a new record with certain values and we would say we're creating a new record in this specific model and we want to link this record that was created with this new record that we're creating from the action through this field. Okay. We can also go in and execute several actions, a chain of actions. Now those actions we would want to create over outside of automations, triggering them from here and having other things going on is, is just going to be messy. I don't do this very often, but we'll go over this when we go over server actions in a later video. We can also go ahead and send an email, which can be super useful for us where we can say, okay, if the status changes, I'm going to go ahead and send an email to the customer based on one of these email templates, that that task is finished. So if we've got this project and it's tied to a customer, they get updates as we're moving through it. You can add followers to this. So say after a certain point in a task, we want to add somebody else that would be notified about changes in this task. I haven't used this one fairly often, but I can see some use cases certainly where in the initial stages of a project or a task, we don't want to notify the higher ups, but as we're moving through it, they may want to be made aware of it. And so we add them as a follower going forward. Another extremely useful one is to create next activity. So what we would do here is if our task moves into a specific status where it needs review, we could come in and we could say we need a new to do, and we're going to say review task for completeness. Okay. And we could go ahead and assign that to, and we can put a little bit more detail in here as far as please review for documents attached and notes required. Okay. And we can go in and say it's a specific user, meaning it's always the same person, or we can go ahead and create a task for the generic, a generic user from the record, which is to say, we look at a certain field on the task and we use that username for it. Okay. Lots of usefulness here to keep our team organized. This one's awesome. I love being able to create next activities. And then that way it makes sure that people are doing what they need to do and aren't notified of that thing until it's time for them to step in and take care of that different task. So super useful there. Lastly, and I really haven't used this one at all up to this point, but there are some people that use this and definitely some great business cases for this. You could send an SMS text message. Now you would obviously have to have this service set up beforehand, but you could come in and you could send a text to a customer. You could send it to another employee. Um, really some great and useful stuff. Just nothing that I've used up to this point. Okay. So now you know the basics. So we're going to go ahead and duplicate this tab just so we can get some information that we need and actually add another field for the tasks. Um, but we're going to come back and we're going to build this out appropriately. Okay. So we're in our duplicate tab here. We went back into views form view and we're going to go ahead and throw in a file field. Okay. And with that file field, we're just going to call it required file. So the use case for this is we may have a task 
where we need certain files in place before we can finish a project. It may be something that we do based on a product where we had this whole big project that we do for customers and some of the tasks are them providing us these attachments. And so we don't want to necessarily have to move between statuses once we've done this. We just want to be able to upload the file and have it finish. So I went ahead and went into developer mode so that we could get a bit more information. Make sure you've got the little monkey there. And we're going to go ahead and go into our automated action, recreate it because it refreshed and it nuked it, which was fun. But we're going to go ahead and say finish task on required file attachment. And this is for our model task. We want it to be active. Our trigger, we're going to say on creation and update because it is possible potentially that somebody creates the task and attaches the file in one fell swoop. To keep our database clean, we're going to go ahead and say that required field, required file, sorry, it's the field, is our trigger field. We're going to edit our domain and we're going to say required file is not set beforehand. And we're going to say required file is set afterward so that that's when our action runs. We're going to hop back over here and close out. And we're going to go ahead and look at this and say, okay, in this project, what is our finished status? So we're going to go to office design and look at this real quick and it's done. We're going to duplicate this just so we can look at it at the same time. And we're going to go to configuration task stages. We're going to look in office design and we've got done right here. If we click into done, up here we can see the ID is three. We need that for moving forward. So moving back into the actual action, we're going to go ahead and say update the record. We're going to add a line. We're gonna to go to status right here. We want the value to change and we want it to change again to three, which is the ID of the stage that we want it to change to. So I will apologize, I misled you a little bit. We're looking at stage. This is why it's important for us to look right here and see what the actual field is that we're wanting to use. Again, this will pop up if you're in developer mode. So this is stage ID that we want to change. So I've changed that right there. So let's go ahead and test this guy. We go into energy certificate. I'm gonna remove that, move it back to where it's gonna work. We're gonna upload our file, get some of my thumbnails there, and we're gonna save. And you see, holy smokes, it moved us to done. We did it. Nice work, guys. We did it. We created an automated action. Hopefully this has given you some ideas for how to make your team more effective and efficient. If you have any questions, feel free to drop them in the comments. But thanks for your time.